My annual bourbon hunting vacation to Kentucky is almost here. Where am I going? What bottles am I hoping to get? We're covering all that today. Welcome back to another episode of Neat Bourbon. My name's Tanner and today we're going to be covering my upcoming vacation to Kentucky. And so this trip that I'm about to be going on, it's an annual trip, you know, started out with four guys and it's kind of, you know, snowballed over the years. And now we're up to 12. So we got a, uh, we got 12 knuckleheads going to Kentucky, you know, going to be enjoying some great bourbon. And speaking of great bourbon, this is actually a rye. So this is a four gate. This is a, a barrel pick. It's a nine year toasted rye. This, she's almost gone. Been nursing her for a while. Absolutely an amazing bottle. I mean, to me, I think this is like the perfect toasted rye. It's not overly toasted. You're getting so much of like those warm, you know, like bready, woody, oak, marshmallowy notes. Yeah, just to me, it's perfect. You get a little bit of like the, like a red berry sweetness on this. The like the toast level on the oak is, you know, right up my alley. There's no astringency there. It's got an awesome finish. You got all that rye spice. And yeah, Fourgate, you can get these in Kentucky, so I'm going to be looking for some Fourgate while they're there. Can never get them in Virginia, can only get them offline, and they're really hard to find places to get them shipped to me here in Virginia. But anyways, one of the bottles I'm going to be looking for are Fourgate. Um, anyways, so yes, the trip has kind of snowballed. Uh, we're up to 12 people now. Uh, just to highlight, the distilleries we're not going to be doing this year. We're not doing Buffalo Trace. We're not doing Woodford. Uh, we're not doing Four Roses. All, those distilleries are closer to the Lexington area. And so we used to do two days Lexington, two days Louisville. We decided to do all four days in Louisville this year. So that's really exciting. So we've got three days kind of, you know, loosely packed full of uh, tastings and then going to be leaving some ample time for me to get around to do hunting at liquor source. So uh, first day we have a tour bus booked. Um, we've got a late start on the tour bus. Don't wanna, don't wanna get going too early. We've got 12 guys getting in late on a Wednesday night. So I can only imagine we'll be up for a little bit, you know, reminiscing of all the good times. So we're getting picked up at promptly at 10 a.m. and we're gonna be going straight out to Bardstown. Now, Bardstown for us is like the group's favorite, the group's favorite distillery. We've done a bunch of them, um, and Bardstown is always the must. Everybody's highlight distillery. We always do the same tour. It's the barrel thieving tour. That's where you know it's like twenty five bucks or something like that. They take you in. You get a you get to try three different barrels at cast strength. The tour guides are fantastic. The restaurant at Bardstown is lights out. Highlight is the hot brown. <laughs> Gotta get the hot brown at Bardstown. It's really good. Uh, but yeah, so do the Barrel Thieving Tour. They have this awesome bar as well, you know, in their Rick House, you know, where it was designed after, uh, what do they say, Elton John meets Wolf of Wall Street. It's really sick. Um, you also, they give you a Glen Cairn every year. So that's an amazing, you know, gift from the tour. So we're going to be going there. Uh, bottles I'm looking to get. I would like to get the, the Disco 11, hearing great things about that bottle. And then going to be looking to pick up some of the Green River line as well. Definitely got to get the rye. And a lot of people are saying the weeded is better than the bourbon. So probably going to pick up one of those two. Definitely know I'm going to be going for the rye. Um, yeah, if they have a Disco 12 out, might get that one. But, you know, there's been no news of it. But they do frequently release those. So you never know what might happen in mid-March. So immediately after leaving Bardstown, we have reservations at the at Willet. So we're gonna be going upstairs to the 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 upstairs bar. So we're gonna, gonna be getting the egg salad sandwich. That's a must. Um, and then yeah, hopefully gonna be trying some uh, family estate purple tops. So haven't really had too much experience with that. Frequently have, you know, 10 bottles stocked you know, at the gift shop, might get lucky and uh, catch a purple top drop, but you know, you never know. That's highly doubtful. 
But outside of that, uh, the, the Johnny Dunn, I think that's one of the uh, the Willet releases. That'd be kind of cool. And after Willet, the day is kind of open, so we're going to be stopping by Heaven Hill. We're, uh, we're going to be stopping by Heaven Hill twice that day. We're going to be on the way out, stopping by Heaven Hill around when they open. Because the Heaven Hill 18 year is supposed to be dropping sometime in mid-March. So fingers crossed that bottle is dropping the day that we're out there. We'll be stopping by the gift shop twice. So... Fingers crossed we get one of those. Or, you know, the uh, the William Heaven Hill, the 17-year, like that one would be sick too. Uh, but again, those would be like the two unicorns would be cool to come home with. Not holding my breath for those. But they're coming out around the time we're going to be there. So that'd be pretty sweet. Of course, you know, going back by Heaven Hill, stopping by their bar. And then, uh, we're going we're gonna to be stopping by Jim Beam on the way back in. Last year when we were at Jim Beam, I was able to get that 18-year. So that was that was a pretty nice snag. So Jim Beam is you know open I think to like 5:30, which is like the latest uh, distillery open on the trail. So gonna be really nice to be able to catch a late tasting there and see if they're putting out you know any bottles like that 18 year. They were putting them out at the end of the day for the next day, and that's how I was able to snag that one there last year. That was pretty cool. That's it for the first day okay. there. Completely forgot. Uh, Gonna be at Mictor's, you know, like every morning for the open. Really hoping to get one of those uh, cash drink Fort Nelsons. You know, if I don't walk into one of those, it'd be freaking epic to get another, uh, you know, Mictor's 10. The new barrel strength rye is dropping, so maybe I'll get lucky and get like a, a bundle of the Mictor's 10 rye, you know, cash strength rye. So like that would be, that'd be sick. But definitely the Fort Nelson is a bottle I am really hoping to get and it's i feel like it might happen if i can get there three days in a row you know an hour or so before they open and day number two we kind of have a later start in the day we're starting it off at angel's envy around noon um so we're doing like one of the mid-level tours at angel's envy so we're going to be able to try you know one of their the store picks we're going to be trying the rye, and I think we're trying something else there. There were three three bottles, but I know we're trying. It might be the base offering, the rye, and a store pick, um, you know, or a cash drink, Angel's Envy. One of those. I don't know, but that one's going to be there um, on Whiskey Row. So really looking forward to that. And then later on in the day, oh, yeah. And then at the end of that tour, I think we have the opportunity to, like, you know, have your name written on one of the bottles. Have your name written on one of the bottles for, like, your own store pick, something like that is one of the offerings there. Not sure I'm gonna be doing that. Um, Angel's Envy isn't exactly like my favorite, at least of their base offerings. I'm the biggest fan of the rye. But hey, you never know. Uh, the, the tasting might woo me. After that, we are gonna be going to Evan Williams. So super stoked about the Evan Williams tour. So we are doing the cocktail class there. So my first time doing one of the cocktail classes, we always you know, do just one of the standard tastings. This year we're doing the cocktail class, so you get to try like three different cocktails. It's pretty cool. It's like thirty bucks, something like that. And then at the end of the tour, I did call the gift shop. They do give you the opportunity to buy that Evan Williams Twelve Year, which if I get the opportunity, we'll be walking out of there with that model. Um, so that's pretty exciting. Um, and then also would really like to come home with the over Overholt Ten Year. I mean the old Overholt Ten Year. Uh, here are great things about that bottle. So if they have that one in the gift shop, definitely going to be walking out of the store with that bottle. And then at the end of the day, we're going to be going by Peerless. We were super stoked. Uh, last time we were, we were in Louisville, all the tours were full of Peerless. So we weren't able to get in. So we do have a tour and tasting of Peerless. Hoping to walk away with the Double Oaks. I'll be there early in the morning to hopefully catch, you know, when they're putting stuff out on the shelves. So I want to get the, uh, the Double Oaked from Peerless. They also just released Toasted, so hopefully I can snag a Double Oaked and a Toasted. Wouldn't mind grabbing, I know they do a couple like 200 mLs or 375 mLs of like some of their other offerings, so really would like to load up on some Peerless because you know I haven't had too many of them, but the offerings that I have had, I really enjoyed. Going on to the, the next day, Nothing Better on the Markets Tour at Old Forester. So that one's really exciting. So I think you get to try the, you know, I think it's like 1920, the the cash strength, you know, Forster Single Bar Bell Proof. I think you, and then you also get to try the Birthday Bourbon as well. So super excited to do that tour. 
I know they just released the high angel share of the 117 series. It'd be cool. Maybe if we can luck into one of those. Maybe a president's choice. That would be epic. But again, not holding my breath for either one of those. Um, outside of that, you know, I think it kind of missed the 1924 out there. So probably not looking to get anything. Um, I don't know if I'll have the opportunity to get anything limited from Old Forester. But we'll be there. We're from out of town. Got to let them know. Maybe they'll have something hiding behind the counter after you took, you know, the most expensive tour that they offer. So never know. So outside of that, just general bottles that I'm looking for. I want to be able to, I want to get some Lux Row. I haven't had anything from Lux Row. Hear great things. I want to get some, uh, maybe some like eight year wilderness trail picks. That would be awesome. Gotta come home with a Russell's Reserve single barrel store pick. I'm out of that one that I had got from last year. Got to pick up another one of those. Uh, the new, the new, new Riff eight year 100 proof. I have a like a four and a half year store pick. I think that bottle's solid, a little bit of a youthy note there, but I'm really excited to taste what that eight year is because the uh, that store pick I have tasted really promising. I think with a little more age, they, they could really be lights out. So really hoping to find one of those. I know that bottle just dropped. Um, you know, outside of that, just like some general oddities, it'd be nice to find, you know, one of those 12-year uh, 100 proof proprietors. Seeing those out, you know, in some hunting videos, would be great to walk in to one of those. And then, you know, just, um, oh yeah, some hard truth. Gotta get some hard truth while I'm out there. The Sweet Mash Ride's absolutely fantastic. I hear they have some new offerings as well. So hopefully I can find some hard truth, maybe some hard truth store picks. I don't know. That'd be pretty cool. I do have a limited budget, unfortunately, for this trip. So um, I'm also planning to make some hunting content with my budget and then just kind of like see what bottles I can get, go from store to store and try to make some sort of like hunting series to see what bottles I can find for the budget that I have. So anyways, guys, you know, I hope you enjoyed this video today. I hope you've get, been able to get some insight into the trip I'm about to be going on. If there are bottles I need to be looking out for, distilleries I need to be checking out, I do have a good amount of availability um, on our Saturday there. So, you know, we can always add another tour. You know, if there are bourbon bars I got to be checking out, if there's anything that I'm missing out, you know, we've been going there for a couple of years now, but we're no, definitely not pros at this. So still kind of winging it. Uh, so anyways, guys, you know, please, if there's any pointers or tips, let me know in the comments down below. And as always, this is Neat Bourbon. My name is Tanner and pop the bottles and share the pours and we'll see you in the next one.